Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Frankowitz, and this presentation was created for the class The Young Child TEEZ 321 at Fort Hayes State University. A brief overview of what I'm going to go over in my slideshow. I'm going to define teratogens and go over a little bit of the history. I'm going to give some examples of teratogens, some different types. I'm going to go over the harmful effects of the teratogens that I've given examples of. And lastly, I'm going to go over the sensitive periods and embryonic development. First on the slide, I'm going to define what teratogen is. And some people may be a little intimidated by this word because it's not something that they hear in their daily lives. But an easy way to remember is that teratogen comes from the Greek word terra, which means monster. And Sandrock does a really great job of explaining on page 82 of the text what teratogens are. And he says that teratogens are any agent that can potentially cause a birth defect or negatively alter cognitive and behavioral outcomes. And this can be anything that the pregnant mother drinks or eats or is or encounters those are all different types of teratogens and on the next slide I'll give some examples for statistics between three and five percent of all children born in the United States are born with defects and of these two to three percent are caused by teratogens on the slide I'm going to discuss some examples of teratogens and first we're going to talk about drugs and these can be prescription, non-prescription, or psychoactive, so that includes your caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine, and cocaine. So yes, ladies, that means that chocolate and soda are out when you're pregnant. Environmental hazards like radiation, carbon monoxide, mercury, x-rays, if the mother comes in contact with any of these, it can harm the embryo, developing embryo. And lastly, parental factors acting as teratogens. And what I mean by this is, things that are directly dealing with the mother, for instance, her emotional state, how stressed she is, and her diet and nutrition all affect the developing embryo. First, I'm going to talk about some harmful effects of drugs, and first I'm going to talk about caffeine. Uh, caffeine has been linked to, if, if it's used in excess, it has been shown to increase the chance of miscarriage. And then alcohol also affects the developing embryo and what can happen is that if drank in excess uh, the embryo can acquire fetal alcohol spectrum disorder FASD and what this is is it causes the child to have facial deformities defective limbs face and heart and it's below average intellectually and some children actually come out mentally retarded Nicotine causes preterm babies, low birth weights, respiratory problems in the child, and cardiovascular problems. And cocaine, another psychoactive drug, can cause low birth weights, reduced length, and head circumference in the baby. On this slide, I'm going to talk about harmful effects of environmental hazards. First, I will discuss mercury, which can be found in fish. It has been linked to the development of neurological problems resembling cerebral palsy and mental retardation. And x-rays have been linked to developmental problems in children such as spina bifida, cleft palates, blindness, and abnormalities of limbs. So it is suggested that if you need to have an x-ray and you're pregnant that you get a lead apron, but they are just not recommended while you're pregnant. On this slide, I'm going to talk about the harmful effects of parental factors. And first, I'm going to talk about diet and nutrition. And it is dire for an expectant mother to eat well during her pregnancy because the developing embryo depends solely on her for food nutrition. Children born to malnourished mothers are more likely to be malformed. Mothers who are obese are linked to babies born with excessive birth weight, fetal death, and stillbirths. Another important thing to pay attention to when you're pregnant is the mother's emotional state and stress. And any drastic changes in mood, stress level, and anxiety not only affect the mother, but affect her unborn child as well. On page 88 of the Sandrock text, 
Sandrock defines a study that linked highly stressed pregnant women with a higher chance of giving birth to babies with emotional, cognitive problems, ADHD, and language delays. Lastly, in my presentation, I'm going to discuss the sensitive periods in embryonic development, and shown here is a diagram that I have obtained, and it is showing the weeks of development and the different body parts that are developing and what is at risk and sensitive to teratogens. And the first two weeks are when the zygote is being divided and it is when implantation is occurring. During this period, teratogens are not usually harmful. However, weeks three to eight are the most crucial because this is when, this is called the embryonic period and this is when the heart, central nervous system, eyes, limbs, teeth, and palate are being formed. It is during this period that these areas are most susceptible to structural damage due to teratogens. Weeks 9 through 37 are called the fetal period, and during this time, the brain and external genitalia are formed or forming. Most areas of development are less affected by teratogens at this time. Teratogens damage the fetus by stunting growth or causing problems of organ functioning. So it's important to just stay away from all of these different teratogens if you are pregnant because it can affect any and all parts of the developing fetus. Here are my references that I've used to obtain all of this information. I appreciate everyone for watching my presentation and I thank you very much.